caught in the bank, they take hostages. This really happened, by the way. It's based on a real story that happened in New York in the 70s. And so we had a lot of material from the real event. We had interviews that we could listen to. We had newspaper reports. Uh, and the movie was, in a lot of ways, very faithful to the, to the real story. But it was, of course, dramatized. Um, and, and it was a great experience. Uh, and, and, and in many ways, a lot of people said to me at the time, aren't you worried about playing a gay character? And I said, why should I worry about playing a gay character? He's, he's a human being. These people have a, a, a relationship that mirrors a lot of heterosexual relationships. You know, their relationships are hard. And in this case, this one was particularly incendiary. You know, uh, uh, Little John, the guy who Al Pacino played, was constantly threatening uh, his, his boyfriend with a gun constantly. He would wake up and he'd have a gun to his head. I mean, it was nuts, much more nuts than in the movie. Um, and so, to me, it didn't make that big a difference. And although, after the movie I, I came out, uh, I got a lot of, not necessarily, I got a lot of oddball parts offered to me. Blowing up roller coasters and uh, what have you. Uh, and so I tried to avoid that, but other than that, it really, you know, it was great. I, it was a, a great beginning for a career. Uh, yes, is the answer. <laughs> I'll give you a longer answer. I was just funning with you. Um, the, yes, I because the the, the, the uh, there was an artist rendition of the character um, that the guy and I've i blocked his name who produced the movie uh, came up with, um, and then there were obviously versions of the doll, but there were so many different versions of Chucky during the shooting because this was pre-CGI. So Chucky was at times an animatronic figure that was controlled from under the floor, six guys under the floor moving his arms and face and what have you. So and Chucky was only shot from here up. Uh, there were little people in uh, Chucky's costumes, there were children in Chucky's costumes, in, in oversized sets, uh, as well as little people. Uh, Chucky was any number of different, had any number of different iterations. Uh, and so it was, hard, it, was hard, it was a hard shoot for that reason, because there were so many different versions and Tom, had to, Tom Holland had to, to work all of them in, in terms of what the editing was in his head, and he had all that down, it was just, it was tough. It was a tough shoot. And Chucky didn't make it any easier than a little SOB. <laughs> uh, the person waving their hat around. Yeah, go ahead. How fun is it to do voice acting? Is that fun? Oh, fun? Uh, actually, it is. No, I mean, and I mean that sarcastically. I didn't mean it sarcastically. It is fun because you, you kind of get to go anywhere you want. You know, you're in a studio, you're looking at the lines, and, and you're reading the lines for the director, and then he'll say, try it this way, try it this way. Uh, let's do, do five in a row and do them all differently. So it kind of sparks your imagination in a way. You know, you can just kind of go and do whatever the hell you want to do. Uh, and then they pluck things out, put them together, sew them together, and then uh, and that's the end of the, that's how the character ends up being realized in a way. Uh, so it's, I enjoy it. I, I had a great time doing it. I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed, uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw a movie called Na Nausicaa? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Miyazaki movie. I played a character in that. Um, and uh, a, a, a very low budget movie that, that I forget the name of, but some friends of mine did, but I did a voice in it. I played an old, an old geezer prospector. And you, can, and you can show up in your pajamas if you want. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Or you can go naked. I see a hand way back there, I think. Way back? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the staff. Oh, uh, there is there. a hand. They're over there in the red, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, right there. Yep. Can you hear me? 
Can you speak up? You have to speak up or have a translator. What were the favorite lines from what? Oh gosh, I can't really think of, the, of my favorite ones at the moment just because there were so many. Uh, I, I mean, it's a, it's a lousy answer to your question, but uh, I can't really think of anything that was more favorite than anything else. I can't, they won't let me. Disney does not allow it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Disney's getting really strict about what they will and what, like, even with screenings and stuff, they won't yeah. let them show certain they want, they, uh, they also don't want recordings of them showing up. Well, now let's not go there. Yeah. Uh, let's go front front row right here. I'm not a girl. <laughs> uh, just because I played one doesn't mean I'm a uh, <laughs> I know, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, most of the people that I can think of are no longer with us. Yeah, you know, I have a favorite actor named Anton Walbrook, uh, one of the great, great actors from the 30s and 40s, um, who was in a movie called The Red Shoes that I just, uh, I'm crazy, I'm crazy for that movie. Uh, in fact, that was my first date with my wife. Was well, she and I watched the Red Shoes? Uh, or I showed her the Red Shoes. She'd never seen it. Um, uh, a lot of those people, you know. Uh, I mean, I could rattle off a bunch of names, but you know, I I, I, wa I watch a lot of TCM. I'm a big Turner Classic movie because I love a lot of those old Hollywood movies. I'm a big fan. So, a lot of those actors and actresses, uh, in a minute, Myrna Loy, uh, you know, William Powell, those guys, uh, just, they were all, they were such, they were craftsmen on the one hand, because they had to